Claudette Colvin refused to give up her bus seat nine months before Rosa Parks. The Alabama teenager didn't budge when she was told to vacate her seat for a white woman and joined a lawsuit that brought an end to her city's segregated bus laws, but she received little recognition at the time for her efforts. In 1955, a black woman refused to yield her seat to a white person on a bus in Montgomery, Alabama. She was removed from the bus and arrested, her ordeal sparking legal action that led to the end of Alabama's segregated bus laws and enabled a widespread civil rights movement to pick up steam. You may think you know the story, but this one isn't about Rosa Parks, it's about Claudette Colvin a 15-year-old who made a stand against entrenched segregation nine months before Parks did, but saw her shining moment eclipsed as other narratives of the era took root in the public consciousness. On March 2, Colvin was riding the bus home from school when the familiar order came from the driver to vacate a row of seats to accommodate a white woman. Three of her classmates got up but Colvin didn't budge, informing the two officers who soon boarded that she knew her constitutional rights. They responded by roughly yanking the teen off the bus and handcuffing her in the back of a squad car, subjecting her to lewd comments as they made their way to the city jail. Colvin's plight caught the attention of local black leaders, who helped secure the legal representation that led to most of the charges being dropped. The leaders considered using her example as justification for a citywide bus boycott, but something wasn't right. She was too young and emotional to serve as the rallying figure for what was certain to be a turbulent movement. The right person arrived when Parks, a 42-year-old seamstress and NAACP secretary, made headlines for her arrest on December 1. Rosa Parks helped initiate the civil rights movement in the United States when she refused to give up her seat to a white man on a Montgomery, Alabama bus in 1955. Her actions inspired the leaders of the local black community to organize the Montgomery bus boycott, led by a young Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. The boycott lasted more than a year, during which Parks not coincidentally lost her job and ended only when the U.S. Supreme Court ruled that bus segregation was unconstitutional. Over the next half-century, Parks became a nationally recognized symbol of dignity and strength in the struggle to end entrenched racial segregation. An anonymous figure in the massive melting pot of New York City, Colvin worked in a Manhattan nursing home until her retirement in 2004, her neighbors and co-workers mostly oblivious to her history. That history eventually came out in bits and pieces, New York Governor Mario Cuomo awarded her the MLK Junior Medal of Freedom in 1990. Colvin has since told reporters that she understands the politics that made Parks the face of the boycott, 